Welcome. Listen to these songs as you prepare your heart and your mind for the message. Good morning, church. I just want to thank the Lord for another wonderful opportunity to come together to share his word. But before I do, I just ask that may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight as you give us this day our daily bread. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So church, our topic for today, where is he? And I know that you could say many of us that at any given time we find ourselves in stressful situations with problems, with aches and pains, with distress, with things that just don't seem to go our way that we find ourselves asking, where is he? From the beginning, it was told in Matthew 1, 23, which said, look, the virgin, virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. We were told to look for God in many places, in the scriptures, in our daily prayers, in our weekly worship, but God is everywhere. His presence surrounds us. Once we realize this, we can begin to learn how to find him in our daily lives. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered together as my followers, I am among them. And I'll take this opportunity to pause and remind you that the words that I bring comes from the scriptures. So you might want to open up your note app on your iPad or get a pen and paper because there will be a lot of scriptures given. And I pray that you will review them after we're done. He is omnificent, which means present everywhere at the same time. Can you imagine being present everywhere at the same time? Now, I know man has done a lot of stuff. They have made a lot of stuff. I say that men do not create anything because in order to create something, you have to make something out of nothing. But God has made everything. He has created everything. And man makes things out of what God has created. But I have not seen any man being able to be everywhere at the same time. He is omnipotent, one of deity, Unlimited power that can do anything. He is omnipotent. The power that knows everything. He exists everywhere at all times. He cannot be contained by anyone or any place or space. He is 
all knowing. Psalms 139, 2 to 4 says, You know when I sit and when I raise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. Psalms 139, 7 says, Ask, where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? The answer, of course, is simply this. A person can never run or hide from God because he is ever present. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 23 and verse 24 says, Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him? declares the Lord. Do I not fill the heaven and the earth? declares the Lord. We read in the Bible that God has revealed himself visibly in a variety of ways. Some of these include God's appearance to Moses in the burning bush, and that's in Exodus 3, and his presence with the Israelites in the wilderness. In the New Testament, Jesus came to earth as in a second person of the triune God to reveal God to humanity. John 1, 1 defines Jesus as the word and calls him God. John 1, 1 shares, as the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen him in his glory of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. He lived, died, rose again, and ascended to the Father in heaven. After this, God sent the Holy Spirit to live within those who believe in him. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1 and 13 teaches, in him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us that God reigns over the nations from his holy throne in heaven. And that's in Psalms 47. And verse 8. So a better question, church, would be, where are you in relation to God? What is your relationship with God? How, church, is your faith? What or who are you trusting in? Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. Yeah. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Church, let's take a look at David. I think we all know his story. For refusing to give up his praying and to keep his position with the king who loved him and afforded him much wealth and luxuries, he chose to leave all that and continue to pray to his God. For David's diligence, faith and obedience when he was stripped of all his titles and wealth 
and thrown in the lion's den. God protected him from those lions and they did not touch one hair on his body. So let's take a look at those three Hebrew boys. You know them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were told if they did not bow down and worship the golden calf, that they too would lose their titles and wealth and be thrown in the fire. Not just a fire, but for being disobedient, the king turned up the fire a whole lot of notches for their obedience to God and their faith. Again, God protected them and God could even be seen with them in the fire. Even so, that the king had to say, they're not burning, but there's someone else in there with them. He knew how many he threw in there because even the guard that threw him in, he burned up on the outside. But God was with them on the inside and not a hair was singed on their body. Not even their clothes was burned. So, question is, what are you doing to seek him? Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Are you drawing close to him, church? James 4, 7 to 10 says, So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not to harm you, to give you a future and hope mm -hmm. in those days when you pray, I will listen, says the Lord. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Mm -hmm. John 10, 27 and 28 says, and this is Jesus speaking. John 10. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they will never perish, neither will anyone snatch them out of my hand. Mm -hmm. Remember, church, you are that sheep. You do have free will. But if you choose to stay in the arm of the shepherd, then he said, no one can snatch you out of his hand. Church, 
that requires diligence. Not just saying, I've looked for him, but follow his word, his directions, and the Holy Spirit's guidance. Matthew 7, 7 to 11 says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. To everyone who, who asks, receives to everyone who knocks the door will be open so you parents he ask you a question the bible says if your children ask for a loaf of bread do you in turn give them a stone or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to them who ask him? So why then, church, do we sometimes feel like we're all alone? Like we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders? Why do we feel like God has left us, alienated us, abandoned us? I'm here to remind you, church, of Psalms 23 and verse 4. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff protects and comforts me. So heed Joshua 1, 9, which states, and this is God saying, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. There was a poem that was written, and I think most of you have heard it at one point or another. It's called Footprints in the Sand. And it reads, One night, I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark skies flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very loneliest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me. So I asked the Lord about it. I said, Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. 
I don't understand why when I needed you most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever during your trials and testing. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. So Jesus, so church, where is God? Where is God? That's our question today. You know, one of the biggest weapons that the enemy is using today against the body of Christ is the spirit of discouragement. Many Christians are so discouraged, it is actually crippling them in their walk with the Lord. They are frustrated, hopeless, and have lost their joy in the Lord. Discouragement is not from God. It is sent to make you give up and give in. It is sent to hinder you from advancing in God. It is sent to prevent you from reaching your destiny. God wants to remind someone today that he does not take vacations he does not have amnesia. And as Paul often says, he does not wear pajamas. God has promised you much. He has spoken much into your life and he cannot lie. All that God has promised you will come to pass if you will only trust him and wait upon him. No matter what you're going through or what is coming against you, it is not too big or too hard for God. Yes, the pressure is on and you may sometimes feel like you're going to die before you get out of it. But know this today, church, that God is with you. Amen. Remind yourself today of who you are in Jesus Christ. You are his child. He is not a delinquent father. He takes excellent care of his children. In the midst of your fire, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your suffering, believe the promises of God. Whether the situation is one sent from the enemy or one that God has allowed, God knows how to cause it to work together for your good. Be encouraged today, church. God is on your side. God has made a way for you, church. He has cleared a path. He knows the way out, church. He is the light in the dark tunnel. He is a stream in your desert. Do not get tired of waiting on God for your blessings to manifest. Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Psalms 37 and 34. God is always on time. It may seem sometimes that he is late or that he is slow, but he is always mm -hmm. right on time. Amen. While you wait on God, 
Be of good courage. Rely on the strength of the Lord. God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted above what you can bear. Even better than that, he is right there with you. It may seem at times that he is not there, but he is there. Lean on him. Find comfort in him, church. Have faith in him. For someone today, you have cried many tears, both on the inside and on the outside. But be encouraged today, church. Be encouraged. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. Psalms 30, verse 5. Don't give up now. Your breakthrough is near. Be encouraged today, my beloved. God is with you. Do not give up on God because God has not given up on you. Wait on the Lord. So let us embrace the commandments given back in Matthew 28, where Jesus told the disciples, I have been given all authorities in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all commands, all that I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. So church, look back and note, when has he ever let you down? How many circumstances has he brought you through? What happened church? Did you forget? Let me ask you, church. Where is your faith? Where is your trust? Who do you believe? What do you believe? Did you forget that you have the Holy Spirit inside you, then let us pray. My God and my heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we, your children, thank you today for the promises that you have made to us in your word. We thank you that you are God who cannot lie. We bind every spirit of discouragement today in the name of Jesus. And we ask you to fill our entire beings with your joy, which gives us strength. Help us to be mindful that you will never give us more than we can bear. Lord, we thank you for always being there with us, no matter what we face in life. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging those who are discouraged today. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening. Join us every Sunday at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to hear more messages like these. Or hit the subscribe button and be notified each time a new message is uploaded. Thank you and God bless.